Third time's a charm, universe. Well, it's time to head back to Hawkins, Indiana. Join me for something a little strange. What up, guys, and welcome to the Web Search Must See Comic and Nerd Culture Show. Welcome to the Comic Universe. I'm Dr. J. I've got a PhD in Nerd Culture, and I should know. I've written it out myself. What's up, guys, and welcome back to another edition of Netflix and Beyond. And this time, we are taking a trip back to Hawkins, Indiana, and talking about the third season of Stranger Things. So, here we go. We are talking about probably one of the biggest Netflix shows of the summer, man. And I gotta say, this season definitely lived up to the hype for me. You know, I absolutely loved the first season of Stranger Things. Even though I'm not an 80s baby, both my parents are. So, like, I have a fondness and appreciation for 80s culture, even though I didn't live it. Now, season two was probably my favorite because we got a lot more development for like the side characters outside of the kids and that was great now the monster was pretty lackluster in season two but like you know other than that i really enjoyed all the character development and even the introduction of new characters like max and different things like that you know a friend of mine on facebook victor probably said it best season one of stranger things is about like childhood innocence season two is all about teenage rebellion and season three is focused on growing pains and that's a lot of what season three is about right it's growing up because now our gang of hawkins kids are now teenagers they're like 14 going on 15 and so like it's kind of weird seeing them doing teenage stuff which you know one of the things i praised about the first two seasons of Stranger Things was that the kids acted like kids. They did things that kids would do. They said things that kids would say. They cursed and they weren't super squeaky clean. I really enjoyed that. And, you know, that continues with Stranger Things season three. And now that they're teenagers, they've moved on to doing more teenage stuff. I mean, like, we see Mike and Eleven, like, making out and Eleven using her telekinetic powers to shut the door so Hopper doesn't try to peep in. And, yo, that was great. As someone who is a big fan of, like, YA stuff and teen drama, I was really looking forward to this, and I'm happy to report that they didn't overdo the teen drama aspect of this season of Stranger Things. Like, yes, it is present, but it does not take up a majority of the show's momentum. It is not the driving force of the show, which is great, because... Stranger Things was never supposed to be like a teen drama. It just shows the kids through their different phases of life. And it's really cool. I really enjoyed that. I realize it's only been a day since the show actually came out or when this video goes up. So I'm going to keep this as spoiler light as possible. I might drop some slight things here, but nothing major will be spoiled for you guys. I promise it's just gonna be like how I felt about the show and do I think it's worth watching which in short I definitely think it's worth watching and I think they really stepped their game up here not just in terms of the budget which is astronomical I feel like Netflix took the budget of every show they canceled over the past year and poured it into Stranger Things because my god the effects and all the different things that go down in this season are just mind-blowing, man. It is crazy. And also, Stranger Things continues their strong tradition of building a really great soundtrack off of Hits from the Time. And this time, unlike in Season 2, which I kind of had a problem with this in Season 2, they feel like more selected properly. Like, I feel like in season two, they had a lot of good ones that fit, but at the same time, there were also ones that were like, oh, we're just manufacturing the situation so that this song can play. Most of the time in season three, it felt more like a Guardian of the Galaxy type situation where the music definitely flowed with the show a lot more, which was one of the biggest strengths of season one, in my opinion, and I really, really enjoyed that. Okay, so season three... They definitely 
fixed the monster problem I feel like they had in Season 2. My one complaint about Season 2 of Stranger Things was that the monster was pretty basic. It was just kind of a copy-paste repeat of the Demogorgon with the Demodogs and... All it was, instead of having one big Demogorgon, it was like a big Demogorgon and an army of much smaller Demodogs. But in this season, the enemy monster is a monster that we're aware of because it was set up at the end of season two. But also, this monster isn't just a mindless killing machine. It has a plan. It definitely has strategy. It thinks and it you know uses what it knows about the kids and our cast against them and it's really interesting you know like granted it's still a monster per se but it's not just a thoughtless killing machine it has more to it than that and the way the monster is tied in to the cast gives the defeat of this monster much higher stakes and a lot more emotional weight. I can't go into any further depth than that because that would be some major spoilers, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the monster. So in terms of character development, we actually really get to see Eleven more as a person now because you know season one she was fresh out of that government facility she was basically feral <laughs> and season two she's learning kind of the basics of childhood but she didn't really get to have that much of a childhood considering she only really was with Hopper for like a year so now she's kind of jumping right into the deep end of teenagerdom you know and she's starting to expand her horizons more not just the whole you know horny teenager thing with um, her and Mike but also she's learning that she can have friends besides Mike and the boys you know her and Max form a really good friendship that I really enjoyed I didn't like the whole corny subplot in season two where for a tiny bit it was like Max and Eleven because there couldn't be another girl in the party. I like that they bonded. I like that Max kind of showed Eleven that she can be her own person, figure out her own look. She figured out her own style, something that wasn't Hopper, it wasn't Mike. It was her. She was really starting to carve out an identity and I really enjoyed that. Also, I liked that they kept the Dustin, Steve, bromance, like brother relationship that they have going in this season. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Now, like the cast is split into a couple different subplots, but the subplots do tie together very nicely. It comes together really well by the end. However, my one complaint about that is I feel like the adults were like 10 steps behind the kids. And for some reason, even though this is the third season of the show, they still continue with the trope of the adults in the cast, like the ones that are in the know, still don't want to listen to the kids and let the kids help. They're just like, no, 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 you, you get to safety, we'll handle this. Like, guys, these kids have seen as much stuff, maybe even more stuff, than you have. Let them help you. They will do this. Their plans have been seriously effective these past two seasons. Listen to them now and this will get things done a lot quicker. Now granted, that's not me saying that the pacing of this season was off because the pacing of this season was much better than season two. There was not the same type of filler episode that was in season two where Eleven just takes a random road trip and has a pit stop where she hangs out in Mad Max land with the other telekinetic kids. None of that. All the episodes that we got, all eight of them, were all relevant to the plot and while episode one was definitely a setup episode, from two onwards you just keep going. You have the pedal right to the floor and things are just moving 
Of course, they check off a couple 80s cliches because, you know, that's just Stranger Things' MO. And, you know, if you've enjoyed Stranger Things so far, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't enjoy this season, you know, coming up. And, of course, they release it on the 4th of July to time it perfectly because, you know, the 4th comes into play here. It's a really fun season, you guys. They put a lot into it, not just in terms of budget, but like in terms of character development, emotional weight. I really liked the villain this season. And again, we just get to see all of them growing up. Nancy, Jonathan, Steve, Dustin, Lucas, Max, Mike, Eleven, they're all growing up and it's awesome to see. Side note, real quick, uh, just wanna go on a quick tangent. Nancy is so fine. Like, oh my God, Nancy is hot. Like, wow. Maybe it's the hair, maybe it's the eyes, I don't know, but man, Nancy, Nancy, Nancy. Jonathan, you are one lucky dude. So, all in all, it was a great show. Um, the ending definitely has one of the best final battle scenes I've seen on Netflix. That was absolutely fantastic. And it really hits you in the feels. Not going to tell you what happens due to the final battle, but man, it definitely gets you. Also, by the end, they kind of leave it ambiguous. I don't know if they're going to do a season four. I mean, they could. It's definitely a possibility. Also, be sure don't turn off your Netflix once you get to the credits, okay? Because there is an after credit scene for Stranger Things season three, which possibly teases at what we could see for Stranger Things Season 4, but I'm not entirely sure if we could get a whole season out of that, because I feel like, you know, if done wrong, it could feel kind of like the same thing we did here, which it was great here, but I don't want to just see the same beats done over again. But I do trust the Duffer Brothers. They've been able to really, you know, make some creative twist with this world so you know if they have a story to tell with season four you know i'm down to watch it we are down to cover it i am definitely up for some more stranger things also stranger things got a sponsorship deal with new coke and burger king so bonus points to anybody who can leave in the comments how many times burger king or new coke was mentioned or featured in stranger things season three no prize given, just bragging rights. But yeah, that's pretty much it for my review of Stranger Things Season 3. Uh, let us know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Where are you in the middle? Let us know all those thoughts, theories, and feels in the comments down below. How do you think they are going to follow up this season if they can? Because this season is going to be hard to top. Again, tell us how you felt about it in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to Hulk smash that like button. And hit that subscribe button and notification bell to join the universe today and become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers. Also, in the outro card, I will leave linked my latest video that I put out, uh, Dr. J's Otaku Outbreak, where I cover a bunch of anime that I have reviewed all this week. So be sure to check that out if you're an anime fan. And I will leave linked a video YouTube mysterious algorithm things you might like as well. Also... You know, don't forget to hit the channel icon that's going to be in the outro card to subscribe. Like I said, I know it's kind of repetitive that I've said it multiple times. Hit that subscribe button and the bell. But it really is important and it really does help us over here in the universe. We do appreciate it. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from Mysterious Reviews for the Comic Universe. And hopefully, I'll see you guys next time in the universe for some more Netflix and beyond. Peace.